You know, in all of paleontology, I think sloths have got to be the most adorable and amazing creatures to ever exist. I mean, just look at them. They're so cute. I love them. What? You don't think they're cute? Let me prove it to you. The sloths and all their relatives, like the extinct giant ground sloth or these anteaters behind me, are part of the super order Xenarthra. They are known for containing some of the most bizarre and largest animals of the Pleistocene epoch. They are characterized with low body temperature, teeth without enamel, and limbs that end with massive claws. Oh, and they're like super flexible. Sadly, only five sloth species have made it through the Ice Age and into today, and none of the cool looking sloths have made it through the Pleistocene. Currently, all the living sloths inhabit South and Central America, but luckily for us, here in Orange County, we can see one at the Santa Ana Zoo. All of today's living sloths either belong to the family Megalonicidae, the two-toed variety, or Bradipodidae, the three-toed sloth. These special claws range from three to four inches and are really useful when climbing trees. But I'm not quite sure about walking. Actually, they can walk. They don't do it very well, or very often, but on occasion when a sloth needs to move from one tree to another, they will go across the ground very slowly and awkwardly to the next tree. Well, since you're still here, could you tell me about the green stuff on the sloth? The green stuff on the sloth is algae. Now the sloth has special hair. It isn't like other mammal hair. It has grooves in it and it absorbs water, which makes a perfect environment for blue-green algae to grow. Thanks! Now, while modern sloths are still pretty cute, there really is no comparison when it comes to their ancient relatives. Fossils of these Lenarthrans date back to about 55 million years ago in South America, where it was the isolated island continent. Because of this isolation, many ancient Lenarthrans were able to evolve into incredibly unique and strange life forms that can be found nowhere else on planet Earth. But when a land bridge formed between North and South America, many animals, including the ground sloth, migrated to this other continent. This massive movement of species is known as the Great American Interchange. Well, actually, it happened twice, and they're both called the Great American Interchange, but that's for another show. So, of all the animals to move from South America to North America, none were as massive as the giant ground sloth. These behemoths were members of the family Megalonicidae and are ancestors to living sloths. They first appeared in the Oligocene about 35 million years ago as smaller versions, but by the Pleistocene they were huge, ranging from 300 to 1200 pounds. I mean, nothing could get past these guys. They had massive bones, thick protective fur, and ginormous claws. Speaking of claws, the greatest claws belong to my favorite species, the 10 foot lovable monster, the Megalonyx Jeffersoni. I mean, even their name means great claw in Greek. As for the Jeffersoni part, well that's kind of a funny story. Back in the early 1800s, Thomas Jefferson commissioned the famous Lewis and Clark expedition. Along with mapping and exploring the American wilderness, he had just one more task for him. Lewis and Clark, as leaders of this expedition, I give unto you one more task. Yes, sir, and that task would be? Why, it would be to bring back a living giant ground swamp. Sir, yes, sir, we shall bring that beast back and it shall be the pride of the Americas. Oh, go! A ground squad? That meant crazy? Don't matter, as long as we get paid. And so began the search for the giant ground sloth. Unfortunately, Lewis and Clark came back empty-handed because the ground sloth had actually gone extinct 10,000 years beforehand. But it was because of Jefferson's enthusiasm in this and other ancient beasts, the study of vertebrate paleontology was introduced in North America. So after all that, I hope I've proven to you why sloths are the most amazing and adorable creature ever. I mean, Thomas Jefferson, one of the greatest presidents of all time, even wanted to find one and send an expedition out. So if I haven't won you over yet, there's really nothing to say except that you suck and I love sloths. Bye!